What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? Listen, girl, I ain't even gonna hold y'all and I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I have forgot all about this episode of College Hill. Listen, yesterday was a lot. Yesterday was a lot because if I hadn't um, left the house yesterday, I would have gave it to y'all. But I honestly, I forget that it comes on on Thursdays. For some reason, I thought it was coming on on Friday. Girl, it was just, it was just a day, okay? But to be honest, this episode didn't really give much. It was cute for what it was. This is College Hill um, Celebrity Addiction uh, Edition, I should say. Uh, season 2, Episode 4, Mask Off. Fuck it, Mask Off. Okay, listen, we ain't finna do that. We ain't finna do that. We ain't finna do that. Girl, y'all saw me, uh, uh, Miss Blue. Blue, pause. Pause this stuff. Because Blue got up on stage, because you know they performing up in Paris. Now, see, they didn't pull out all the goddamn stops. They said this is, like, one of Beyonce's biggest shows. Like, it's, like, over 80,000 people up in there. And um, Miss Blue came out there doing My Power, and she was dancing and stuff. She danced so bad. Beyonce, she, she ate Beyonce ass up. Beyonce had to lead the stage, girl. Beyonce had to lead the stage. I said, wow. Well, the next generation. Anyway, it was cute. I just had to mention that. Moving on from that, um... Let's get into the episode, okay? But like I said, the episode really wasn't much, but I prefer, and if you know me for a while, you know I like a balance in my drama. Sometimes you look at certain shows because you know that it ain't going to be nothing but drama, okay? Like if you choose to look at anything on Zeus Network, streaming service, you already know what you're getting. Don't come there trying to think that you finna get something with some intelligence, okay? People actually being adults and talking about things calmly, you know? No, you're getting fisticuffs. Did y'all see that Baddies West goddamn reunion? I was so mad. I said that was a waste of everybody time. Can we just at this point, because even though I talk down on Zeus, I still be watching it. I can admit it. I can admit it. You know, I, I'm part of the problem. I'm part of the problem. You know, and I feel like I hate watch because I watch the shit just to talk mess about it. And that's no better. Okay. I'm, I, I already know. I admit it. But can you just put them in a boxing ring and stop calling it a reunion? No words need to be discussed. Just go ahead and let them street fight a box because what is the point? That reunion, at least on a couple of reunions, they at least had people sit down and talk their differences out just a little bit. Baby, it was fighting right off the bat. And I said y'all wasted all that time. Two freaking episodes for what? Fist the cuffs. And none of y'all can really fight. Anyway, moving on from that. We get into this episode, like I said, I like my mixture of drama, okay? But I like it to be balanced, and this is balanced for me because it's not too much, you know what I'm saying? And I'm hanging on into this season because I really want to know what exactly happened between Amber Rose and Jocelyn. Jocelyn kind of brought the gutterness to this show, but, you know, for the most part, she hasn't really been doing that much, Besides what happened in the first two episodes, okay? She kind of redeemed herself just a little bit, you know? So, the drama is really to a very much of a minimum so far. But again, I just can't wait till we get to the episode to understand exactly what happened between her and Amber Rose that they came to fisticuffs, okay? Girl, I sound old. Fisticuffs. Baby, they was punching. And she was trying to pull Amber's scalp. I said, girl, what you, what you ain't no hair up there. What's going on? But anyway, the episode picks up where it left off last week when Dr. Patty came through to the house and she wanted to see everybody that was um missing from school, okay? Ray J was the first stop on her tour. Ray J, he was still up in that thing sleep, okay? He was still up in that sleep. It's 430. Now, let me just tell you this. On the one hand, if, if this wasn't something where... He signed up for it, and he knew exactly what he needed to do. I wouldn't have no problem with him coming back to whatever situation it was and sleeping till 4.30 or whatever because we do know, regardless of how much that man be a clown, he do work, and he got a lot of businesses, and he got a lot of stuff that he be going on, okay? Whether we see it or not, that man be ripping and running and doing a whole bunch of shit, so Nick probably was really just tired. And I understand that because when I have a day off in the middle of the week, especially, girl, I'm using that day. If I ain't already went to the store and, and did my whole shopping and did my laundry and stuff like that and cleaned my place, 
I'm sleeping. <laughs> I'm catching up on some sleeps. Okay, but we know that ain't the case with Ray J in this situation. She had to break it down to her like, you literally are a black father to black kids, especially your black son. What example are you setting when you said that you wanted to come up in here, you wanted to do better from what happened last time on the last season where you totally messed up on that and now you didn't mess classes. Not one class, but classes all over throughout the whole curriculum of this little project experiment that y'all supposed to be doing it makes no sense you're not even there that long i think they're there for like a month you know they're there for like probably a month or so I i'm pretty sure it was just a month and you already missed like practically a week because you left you went to class then you left and if you don't understand how college goes sometimes you don't even go to school every day and you don't even go to the classes every day, okay? You go to the class like at least three times a day, or I should say three times a week, or at least two times a week. Because I remember when I was in college, I had, and I was on a, a, a quarter system. So at DePaul University, it's 10 weeks to each quarter. You know what I'm saying? And um, you will have classes either on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then you will have some other classes on Tuesday and Thursdays, just like that, you know, and it, 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 whichever one, sometimes you would have some that be like back to back, back to back, but it literally be like, so we're going to have this class on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's just how it was. Anyway, somebody outside, but, um, mind you, I'm waiting on my sister to get here, but so if I'm a little bit distracted, that's just what it is. Cause I'm, I gotta go help her bring some stuff in the house or whatever. But anyway, because we're going to see Janet tomorrow. It's the pleasure. It's so oh, oh, oh. Girl, I've been on a roll, y'all. I've been on a roll. I have been feeling real good lately. I love that for me. But anyway, he got to get coached by her to tell her uh, for, 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 to, to realize that you fucking up, okay? Like, you didn't go to the Legacy Museum. That is something that is very important. And you would think... You keep on putting it out there that your family was a part of the civil rights movement or whatever, but yet you're not taking this experience seriously. And it's just really irky because, again, what is his purpose being on here? To be a class clown. She had to talk some sense to him, and he eventually got it or whatever because he was just like, you know what, I, I can't believe that I'm up here doing this stuff. You know, I did say I was going to do better, but I'm obviously not, and it ain't right and all this shit and woo-woo-woo. Now I just I, I woke me up, Okay. Meanwhile, she go talk to Tiffany. Girl, Tiffany, Tiffany was receptive. I feel like I don't think she really needed to talk to Tiffany because it was just one class that she missed. And when you're in college, you can miss days. It's up to you. They don't come around doing all this stuff to you and, you know, checking in or whatever, you know, because sometimes stuff happens. Sometimes you just be too tired and you just don't want to go. Okay, because let me tell you something. I didn't miss a whole bunch of days to going to class. And as long as you got the work in, you know, they really didn't care. But see, with Ray J, he didn't do the assignments and he was missing presentations and all of that. We saw the difference when Iman missed class. He came back and he called up right away. On he, he took the initiative to catch up and to get to stay on task, right? Ray J wasn't the one that was doing it. But then she also tried to talk to Jocelyn. Jocelyn was knocked out, okay? And, you know, Amber had to call her and let her know that, you know, Dr. Petty had called, uh, came over, wanted to talk to you and all that stuff. But I have to keep on thinking about the fact that this is not a real program. They are not getting real degrees or diplomas or, you know, certificates or whatever because they cannot do anything with this little short experience. They are not being treated as a college student would, all right? And so that is somewhat of a drawback when it comes to this show because, again, they say celebrity edition, but... um. They try to hold them to a certain standard where you have to come in and you really do have to put forth the effort. But they literally, I feel like, dumb down the lessons and whatever that they're doing because a lot of this stuff, each and every one of us that's watching, we would have did it in less than a week. We could have got all of that assignment done in less than a week, okay? And we would have been done. And if college was like that, bitch, everybody would have passed with a 4.0 plus, okay? And I'm just sitting here like, y'all got it so easy and y'all still can't get y'all messed together. 
you know, we got Quay up here talking about, you know, he feeling different, social anxiety with um uh 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 Tiffany. And I feel as though I understand what he coming from. And I've always wondered how that is with people who play different characters that they built their career on and people know them for. And then when they come time to actually have to be themselves and not that character, how do they feel? And we see the trepidation that he feels trying to just find who he is or trying to settle into who he is outside of that TT character, you know? And so that was something. Um, you know, moving on from that, it's time to go to school. Uh, they're getting ready, you know, and this is about to be uh, midterm week almost. And Ray J is just having thoughts about how, you know, he wants to go back and he wants to apologize. And I will say I appreciate that part of it. When they actually went back to school, you saw that Ray J was trying to, you know, memorize the school hymn for um, Dr. Petty's class. And he eventually went in there and he sang it or whatever for the most part. He did what he's supposed to do. He made up the assignment. And let me tell you something. Some of these professors ain't that forgiving. Okay, you missing an assignment, bitch, you missing an assignment, and that's just it, all right? Ain't no ex uh, extension or whatever. To all my people that's looking at this and y'all about to enter college or you ain't know nothing about this, and you wanna know what I got through college with? RateMyProfessor.com. So when it came time to trying to pick a um, school, I mean, a, a, a particular course, especially one that you actually needed, Baby, I used that every goddamn year I was in college because ain't no way in hell I'm finna get a professor that um is negative. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finna get all of that, you know? And that's difficult. That's not understanding, you know, that just do too much. I had to do that. I had to do that. And I mean, when I tell you, they be cutting them professors up on RateMyProfessor.com. I said, oh, that, thank you. Thank you. I, and then I know it was one time I had this one lady and I had went on ahead and got her class. And something said, go ahead on that. And I did. And bitch, they said, don't do it. Don't do it. She is the worst. I hurried up and got about that class before I could uh, finish it wrong. I said, uh -uh, let me drop this before I, I, I be stuck with it and give me another professor because I just couldn't do it. Because one thing I don't like is when people be very negative to you because I did at one point, like in my freshman year, I had this one professor that was just doing the absolute most. Like she was so negative and she, she, I shouldn't feel anxiety and a little bit, I ain't going to say scared, but I shouldn't be nervous and anxiety ridden when I come into your classroom because I don't know how you're going to talk to us and what you're going to do. And you're talking down to us. Granted, we're grown at this point. But still, we're young adults, all right? Some of us is getting our first taste of being on our own and you coming in talking down to us like we fucking kids still, you know? And I just really wasn't here for it. I don't like that type of stuff. And my nerves were so bad going up into that lady classroom and I just, I don't even know how I made it out. But anyway, moving on from that, he went to the... um acting teacher and he really apologized to him you know just telling him he's a character so that's just basically what it is ray j apologized to everybody he went to the legacy museum um and he was talking about how the rest of the people was telling him you know what well, once you go up in there it's going to evoke some emotions baby my face look good it's going to evoke some emotions out of you and you know again he put out there it did do that because his family has a history with the civil rights movement his grandfather helped lead some marches and worked on marches with Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, they, they, if you did not know, the Norwood family is from Mississippi, okay? And, you know, he said the house that they had, uh, probably 9 out of 10 was his grandparents' house or whatever, their family home down there got firebombed and everything um, during the civil rights uh, uh, uprising and stuff like that. And I said, wow, you got all that history in your family and you out here doing the stuff that you're doing and supporting the people that you support. I just don't understand that. I don't understand that. But, hey, everybody is entitled to their own opinions and to their own feelings. So, it is what it is. You know, you do that. Now, it's time for the midterms to come up, okay? So, basically, in Dr. Patty's class, I don't know what she said her midterms was going to be. I know with the acting class, they had to come up with 
um, a scenario where they're acting like an interviewee and an interviewer, you know, type of situation like that. And, um, no, that's in the French class, okay? And then in the acting class, they had to come up with a metaphor uh, for their life or whatever. And then they, I think they had partners or something like that. And also, in one of the classes, they had to come up with like a folklore, a spirit, a, 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 a slave narrative or something like that. And so they had to come up with it. And this was in the African-American class and the history class, you know, African-American history class. Either make a fork, a folklore, folklore, uh, um, you know, what did I say? A spiritual or something like that or a slave narrative or whatever that can relate to today, you know, something like that. And I thought, you know, let me tell you something. You give me some shit like that. Now, see, this would pique my interest and this would make me want to come to class because stuff like this. And even though I'm not the type of person that, um, I'm not a person who will, who likes to do public speaking or whatever. I don't do that. So you give me something like this that I actually know about, that'll, 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 that'll just make me go ahead and start going. You know what I'm saying? And and, 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 and get me involved and kind of like calm my nerves because it's something that I actually know, you know? So I'm listening to what these midterms got to be. And I'm like, this is real easy. This is real cute or whatever. But I have to remember that some of these people ain't never been to school like that or, you know, looked into their history like that or whatever. And maybe I'm coming from a point of view because, again, I've been to school. But also, I just feel like it's easy and <laughs> making it seem like it's so hard. Ray J up here getting massages and stuff and the nigga up there moaning like, I said, ew, what are you doing? I mean, I ain't never had a massage like that. I ain't never had a massage, okay? Oh, yeah, one of the classrooms, she was like, uh, I want y'all to talk about the mask that you wear, okay? Um, and also, you got Quay and Parker. They still trying to get ready for the, um, you know, Magic City Classic. At one point, they had to partner up for, like, an actor acting class, and they couldn't do... Well, Quay didn't show up in one of the classrooms or whatever, something that they had. He didn't show up because he had to go to practice, okay? Because the Magic City Classic is coming up. We see him trying to get that. And um, we see Parker up there doing her love, uh, you know, with the Majorette team and all that. And I really hope they do good because... They don't need y'all coming through today, uh, uh, today stuff when they've been practicing all semester long, probably all year long, and then y'all come through and mess it up and muck it up. Because Parker, you was looking a little bit shaky in the preview for next week, okay? You was like, oh, something feels off, something feels off. Girl, go sit down. Go sit down, because we ain't got time, okay? Because we, we need to be on the nines, okay? Not the eights, but the nines, okay? And, you know, when it comes down to it, I like it when everybody be sitting there and they just be going ahead and getting all their stuff together and um, actually sitting there doing their work. Meanwhile, it's time for them to do something about the first class, their first assignment, midterm, which is... um. What mask do you wear? Bring something that represents the mask that you wear, okay? And so everybody gets to school, and New York was the first one that came um, to pre present. She went up to present, and her mask, she brought a chain that said, I love New York. And she was just talking about the fact that, you know, a lot of people, this is what got her into the um, foray of people eyes and made her the queen of reality TV, especially black reality TV. And it's a persona that she want to kind of step outside of and she want people to get to know who Tiffany is. So that's the mask that she hides behind because that's who we know her for. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I really did like that. I like this assignment. I like deep introspective uh, uh, situations like this, okay? It, 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 it makes you go there. Meanwhile, um, you had even Quay. Quay talked about, you know, trying to be who he is, trying to be Quay instead of just being TT, you know, and feeling like sometimes TT, that character and that wig, because his, his mask was the wig, 
is what kind of hindered him and helps him back from being who he was and people get to know who Quay is and kind of being scared to show that. And so now he's able to do that. Like he's about to step out. And I want him to do that more because, you know, that's the thing what people don't realize these days. When y'all come up with these characters on internet, even when you do it on TV, you see it what happening with actors. You even see it happening with singers. Um, they're so people get so used to seeing you one way and cause you've been doing it so long. And then once you try to step out, it's like, it's not receptive to the public because they so used to seeing you doing this certain bit or certain genre or certain, you know, type of movie or whatever, scene and acting that it's not clicking with them when you try to do something different, you know what I'm saying? And you don't want to get typecast and you don't want to get put into that pigeonhole of a character. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think it's really good that they're trying to step out from who they are and be, who, well, who their characters are and be them, put their selves more so on the forefront. Uh, Parker was talking about how, you know, she wears her smile. Um, it's her mask because instead of just showing people how she really feels and how tough she does have it and the things that goes on within herself, she always, you know, has behind her smile. That is understandable. Uh, a lot of people do that, especially like when we be depressed and shit. Sometimes you don't want people to know that you're depressed or whatever. I told y'all when I got on this camera all last year, baby, I was smiling. I was laughing. I was kicking with y'all. Girl, I, and, and I was dying inside. I was dying inside. But moving on from that. Um, Iman talked about his jersey. He had he hid behind the basketball jersey. Understandable. Um, Jocelyn got up there and said that she is the mask. You know, had it behind all of the jewelry and the clothing and the uh, uh, the money that she gets or whatever. Instead of being who she really is, and people don't know who she really is because she's hiding behind all of this stuff because this is what she was taught to do. You know, um. What's his name? Orion said his hair was his mask. Like, do I feel like that? I, I get it. I get it. Because in a sense, let me tell you something. I be thinking like, and I hope this never happened. I, if something happened where I had to lose my hair, I feel so, like I wouldn't know what I do with myself, okay? And I don't know if I would say my hair is my mask, but it is a part of me. It is what makes me me. But, you know, I, I got that. I totally did. I said, oh, shit. And I mean, uh, resonating with just about everything everybody was saying. And um, the one that really got me and touched me, this show is really making me look at Amber Rose in a different light. Okay? Because we're not getting the over-sexualized Amber Rose, which was understandable. She's the only one that really kind of like understands or be vocalized about the way when people go to college or whatever we ain't trying to dress up and all that shit she said bitch they be too goddamn tired to be trying to dress up and put all this stuff on that's where everybody just throw on anything i said yes yes unless we got to go to work afterwards and we got to do all that shit unless we just going to class and then going back home or going back to the dorms baby we just throwing on some sweats a hoodie and we're gonna go there and we're gonna go back and we're gonna get back in the bed that's just what it is okay but she put up there the fact that um she put some pictures of her some sexy pictures of her and she was just saying how her mask is that when she was got back when she first got into the industry or whatever she just over sexualized herself and it was like a defense mechanism because once she got into the relationship with kanye and then people start you know wanting to put out pictures of them took a picture of them and that's when she kind of got tossed into the media you know, all the negative, um, with the positive comes the negative, And there was a lot of negativity that was coming her way. And they were just talking about her body, talking about who she is and all this stuff. And so before her, her thing is, it's just like when a fat person, sometimes when a fat person or somebody with a disability or whatever, before somebody can say something negative about that, they'll self-deprecate themselves first. You know what I'm saying? I, have I done it? I do it in a di uh, in a joking way, but it's not because I don't want nobody to say it first. It's just because that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? But she said, so she, you, you want to call me a hoe? I'm going to be a hoe. You know what I'm saying? You want to call me this? I'm going to be that. You know what I'm saying? And so you just see like Amber Rose is really going through a process. She's going through a process right before our eyes. 
um because i still follow her on social media you know and seeing her on this show it's just giving me a different perspective of her and i didn't realize how troubled of a past she had you know when they was in the other classroom for the acting they pissed me off because at the end of the episode at the end of the episode they had to go to their acting final right they're partners okay y'all literally sitting there and y'all at the house, y'all at the school, y'all doing this stuff, whatever. Y'all are literally um, trying to get y'all stuff together. Y'all rehearsing, y'all coming up with the things and everything. And then when it's time to go to the class, the other partners don't show up. You got Quay, you got Iman, and I think you had Tiffany. And Amber, no, Amber Rose was still at the house. But, um, and Orion, I think. You had them there, okay? Everybody else was still at the house because Ray J couldn't find his phone. And I didn't understand why are we working and, and waiting on him to find a fucking phone when he already got another phone. Like, it was just pissing me off. It's just pissing me off, okay? And that is the reason why I cannot stand doing group projects, all right? I really cannot do that because it's always never failed. I have never been in a group where the project went off without a hitch meaning everybody pulled their weight okay and i'm just like oh my god i hate when that stuff happened mm. when they was in a acting class i should say uh they was doing the metaphor thing and you know the teacher or i should say the professor wanted to talk to them one-on-one -on -one. so we get um we saw the situation with uh orion and he said something about, you know, sandcastles or something and then they crumble or whatever, something like that. But basically what he was saying was how, you know, his life went one way real fast and real early and then it kind of took a crumble. It took a tumble, it took a standstill and all that. And that was in reference to the fact that when he was younger, he did have a slight music career. He was able to put out an album, I believe, but he didn't go nowhere from it. He really didn't go nowhere because if you ask me what's the old Ryan song, I don't know. I don't know. Without looking up on Google or looking up on um, any uh, music app, I don't know, okay? But I do remember that he did have a little short-lived music career. And most people gave him a chance because of the fact that he was Omarion's little brother. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. But I like the fact that it do seems like he's very much, you know, content with life. And he's not harping on the fact that he didn't have this big a uh, great music career whatever I, it feels like he's he's literally at peace with himself and i like that for him um i felt bad for jocelyn a little bit because you know a lot of people that come off real harsh and real bullish and you know just real negative energy and aggressive or whatever the way that jocelyn has been perceiving herself and want to be the villain on a lot of things or want to be that boss bitch that's just you know ain't nobody gonna say shit to me and all this stuff and woo 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 it's because they, they, they have a lot of shit that goes on in their life. And, you know, they try to hide it. And it's a defense mechanism. It's like a guard. It's like a wall that they put up to try to protect themselves to stop being hurt or getting hurt or whatever. So it's like, let me hurt others first. And let me come at them first or whatever. And we already know some of us, especially if we'd been seeing Jocelyn for a while on TV, that, you know, she grew up in the streets, in the ghetto, as she says, of Puerto Rico. Her um, father died of a drug overdose and she said her mother basically was so cold and callous the way that she told him told her about him passing she never really got to get that love from him because he wasn't really there because of the fact that he was high you know he was on drugs and all of that and she never got sympathy you know what i'm saying so she don't know how to give that back or whatever so it's it's making her look at things um, the whole thing about Amber Rose looking at things through a tunnel, you know, and the way that her life has been. We already talked about that. And I mean, you get into the acting class and the acting class, baby, he just make you go deep. And that is what it's about. Because you got to convey emotions. If you want to be an actor, since Ray J was up there and it was just making me mad, again, going back to the other episode when they first got into the acting class and he up there talking about some, I've been on this and I've been on that and I know how to act and all this stuff and woo, woo, woo. Yeah, but you don't know how to convey. I can never see Ray J doing a dramatic piece. I can barely see him doing a comedic piece outside of just playing himself, you know? 
And um, no, you can't act. You you really can't, to be honest. Because acting involves more than just being able to read a script. You got to emote those emotions, okay? You got to make your uh, uh, audience feel the chemistry. Bitch, I saw The Little Mermaid. Ha ha uh, Hallie. Hallie was up there. Mama didn't say a goddamn words, but she was speaking with her eyes. She was speaking with her eyes, and I felt it, bitch. Maybe because I was drunk, but I felt it. I was like, yes, girl. Yes, girl. That nigga played you okay wipe them tears wipe them tears he ain't even know who you were all right wipe them tears girl but um that was that also you get jocelyn talking to dr patty because of the whole fact that she wasn't able to speak to her when she came over there because jocelyn was sleeping she wouldn't get up but um you know dr patty just had to get something together like y'all just gotta get it together i need y'all to be here she basically told ray j he can't um miss no more classes you can't miss no more classes and they got 15 more days left you cannot miss any more classes or you will get put out okay then you get omarion coming through with his little sound bowls and stuff baby ray j and amber rose got they asses up because he, they was laying down there he said listen y'all can lay down y'all can sit up if y'all want to do it so i guess the sound bowl stuff is like a meditation type of thing you know and i want to get into meditation so bad i really do i'm so in this era where i want to try new things because i'm just all about trying to keep a positive perspective about myself especially after the things that i went through last year i just want to keep a positive mind frame i want to be clear you know what i'm saying so i'm into just like trying a lot of stuff and plus stress i want to keep my stress level as low as possible because that was part of the reason why my mama had the heart attack that she had she wasn't sick she wasn't sick she was over medicated but she was also extremely stressed out and that was the main reason why my mom left chicago and went to the suburbs of indiana you know what i'm saying with my sister so that it can give her less stress a little bit but um her job was just basically her job was about to kill her mm -hmm. so you know i'm trying to get on this less stress type of tease or whatever you know, and I felt like <laughs> it was funny. I'm not going to laugh. It, it was it was a little bit funny the way they got up because at one point when they was talking and then they went back to go see, they said, them niggas still laying down and sleep. <laughs> I said, bitch, sometimes we cannot have an open mind for nothing. Okay, for nothing. Um, Quay and Tiffany had a little conversation about how you know, she she really is there for she said she's not there for the experience of just being there. She wants to graduate and all this stuff. I said, girl, all right. You know, Amber Rose, listen, one of them, I think when Jocelyn was talking to Dr. Petty, she said, I mean, honestly, I didn't think that we was going to actually have to do homework and stuff. I said, what the fuck? You are not going to just be coasting alone at this school doing nothing. What are you talking about? I didn't know if I we was really gonna have to do homework. And so I said, so you ain't see the first season? You ain't see the first season? I said, child, y'all are weird. Y'all are dumb sometimes. But um, when they get down to it, they get down to it. When they was trying to get this work done, and this time they incorporated some of the actual ASU students into some of their groups or whatever. And um, you know, it is what it is. I still feel as though if they want us to feel as though this experience is something real, something that we should take seriously, which we do not, um, they should incorporate them into classrooms that actually have actual ASU students and not just classrooms that literally is just only them and maybe three other ASU students that could possibly not be ASA, ASU students or I should say college students or whatever, depending on what school they go to next. Because then it'll give you the real experience. Because when they was in the acting class, it's literally just them, the cast members, okay? No one else is there, you know? So I, that's why I feel like some of the people don't take this experience real serious because it's only just them in a classroom. But that was that. So um, y'all tell me how y'all feel. I know I was rambling throughout all of it, and I apologize. But um, yeah, I was a little bit distracted when I was watching it. So I just wanted to get this to y'all. Y'all tell me how y'all feel, and i see y'all later. Please enjoy your weekend, all right? Because I am. I am. And I'll see y'all later.